Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. We all embrace the news this week that summer is officially underway. And when summer comes to Vermont, Vermonters gravitate to the water. Lake Champlain is the state's largest body of water, which we share, of course, with the state of New York and the province of Quebec. Even if you don't live on the lake, a majority of us live in the lake basin. And that means everything that runs off the land ends up in the lake. To learn, to learn more, we turn to a new series of educational videos from UVM's Lake Champlain Sea Grant Institute in association with SUNY Plattsburgh. The videos share science-based information about the lake and about the basin economy. In just a moment, we'll see one of those videos, but first let me introduce Gary Dezeal, who joins us via Zoom. Gary produced the video series in his role as Community Development Specialist with Sea Grant and UVM Extension. Great to have you with us this afternoon. Thank you, Fran. Great to be here. So, so what are the key reasons for creating this video series? Well, one of the, uh, goal, the, the one goal of the Lake Champlain Sea Grant program is to um, promote workforce development within the area of tourism associated with the lake and its rivers and streams that uh, drain into it. We wanted to create a, short, a series of short educational videos that would help people who worked in tourism associated with the lake understand the lake and its issues a little better. Um, an example of this is a se seasonal employees at state parks mm. who uh, interact with visitors daily. If the employees knew a little bit more about invasive species or cyanobacteria blooms, for instance, they um, may be able to have serve customers better or be more engaged at work. Uh, that, what, what a great idea. And what are some of the other, other topics covered by the videos? Clearly the, the cyanobacteria. Uh, what, what, what other topics? Right, cyanobacteria, blue-green algae bloom, kind of that's the same thing. We've created 10 videos and they were all professionally filmed and edited by our wonderful across the fence colleague, uh, Marco Ayala. Mm -hmm. uh, the lake and the basin are faced with significant environmental challenges like cyanobacteria, invasive species. And there are videos that delve into these topics. There are videos that highlight ways we can protect the lake's health from green storm of water infrastructure to um, things like mowing your lawn at a three inch height. Hmm. And there is important focus on the basin economy, events like the professional bass fishing tournaments. Um, these areas of focus each have important connections to workforce development, employee training, whether you are a seasonal employee at Sandbar State Park, for instance, in Vermont, or Pointe aux Roches in New York, um, to being a monitor at a boat ramp or a camp counselor on one of these sparkling lakes within the basin. Well, you know, I love informed park rangers and um, it's always great. And the fascinating history of L the Lake Champlain Basin a video that we're gonna show is about Lake Champlain's natural history, including how the lake was formed and the deepest part of the lake. So let's take a look at that. Lake Champlain is an extraordinary natural resource nestled between New York, Vermont and Quebec but the lake and its tributaries are being negatively affected by human activities on the land. Lake Champlain Sea Grant works to develop and share science-based information to improve the environment and economy of the Lake Champlain Basin. Lake Champlain is a key feature of the Vermont, New York, and Quebec landscape. The lake has a rich natural history and has served as a hub for recreation and tourism. If you look at an aerial shot of the Lake Champlain Basin, you can see the long and narrow shape. How is Lake Champlain formed? In addition to the long and narrow shape of Lake Champlain, you'll notice the Adirondack and Green Mountains, which form the watershed boundary on the eastern and western side of the lake. These mountain ranges were formed from tectonic plate movements that happened 500 million years ago for the Green Mountains and 100 million years ago for the Adirondack Mountains. The shape of the lake is derived from glacial forces that began to carve out the landscape during the Pleistocene age, roughly two and a half million years ago. The rocks and landforms of the Lake Champlain Valley are a geologist's dream. What are some of the geologic highlights of the Lake Champlain Basin? One of the top places I'd recommend checking out to view this region's unique and rich geologic history is Fiskori. Fiskori is located in Isle Lamont, Vermont, and is a great place to see one of the world's oldest coral reefs. It's remnants of the ancient Iapetus Ocean, which 
would have covered this region 500 million years ago. Another site that I'd recommend is the Champlain Thrust. This site is located off of Lone Rock Point in Burlington and is viewed best by boat. This site shows an exposed thrust fault which runs 200 miles from southern Quebec all the way down to the Catskills region of New York. What makes this site so unique is that you're able to view a low angle exposed thrust fault. This thrust fault actually shows where you have older rock which is pressed on top of younger rock. This is a really unique geologic feature. In this case, rocks of the Cambrian period about 500 million years ago have been pushed up and onto rocks of the later, younger Ordovician period about 450 million years ago. Lastly, I'd recommend stopping by the University of Vermont Perkins Museum of Geology. There you can view the skeleton of a 10,000 year old beluga whale. This whale was exhumed from Charlotte, Vermont and is a remnant of the Champlain Sea. Prior to the lake we see today, this area was also home to two other water bodies. The first was Lake Vermont roughly 20,000 years ago. The first freshwater body to form as the glaciers retreated north. The immense weight of the glacier's thick ice, however, depressed the land to such a degree that it allowed seawater to flow in through the St. Lawrence and Richelieu River, which slowly created the saltwater Champlain Sea around 13,000 years ago. As the glaciers again retreated, the land rebounded. This caused the water flow to reverse back to what they do today, flowing north, gradually shifting Lake Champlain back to the freshwater lake by about 9,000 years ago. Today, Lake Champlain is 120 miles long and 12 miles wide at its widest point. It is 400 feet deep at its deepest point, which bears significant ecological importance. This great depth allows for cold, oxygen-rich water to settle at the bottom of the lake throughout the summer months and provides great habitat for a variety of aquatic organisms. When we think of Lake Champlain, we tend to think of it as one ecosystem, but the lake is actually divided into five distinct regions, and those regions have unique physical, chemical, and biological properties. The segments of the lake include the main lake, the south lake, the northeast arm, Mallets Bay, and Missisquoi Bay. The main lake is the largest, deepest, and coldest portion of the lake. Nutrient concentrations are relatively low in this segment as well. The main lake thermally stratifies throughout the spring and summer months and is home to many cold and warm water fish species, most notably lake trout. This section provides high quality drinking water and is home to the greatest number of shipwreck sites on Lake Champlain. The Northeast Arm and Missisquoi Bay are shallower by comparison to the main lake. These sections struggle with warm weather cyanobacteria blooms due in part to elevated phosphorus concentrations. The Northeast Arm has a strong fishery and is popular among anglers. Additionally, this region is home to several waterfront Vermont state parks, including Kilcare and Burton Island. The South Lake segment is shallow and narrow. Phosphorus concentrations fluctuate and much of the phosphorus enters the lake through tributaries. The South Lake has a great warm water fishery, particularly bass and northern pike. Mallets Bay has the lowest phosphorus concentrations in the lake and is known for having overall clean water. The bay is home to the sandbar wetlands that recently earned a class one wetland certification, the highest level of protection. The Lake Champlain Basin is 19 times larger than the lake itself. This means that the land to water ratio is 19 to one. This is actually three to four times greater than that of the Great Lakes. This truly amplifies the impact of land use management and water quality. This high ratio land draining into a relatively small volume of water means that pollution in the runoff is concentrated by the time it reaches the lake from different regions of the watershed. Today, the water quality challenges we face are from non-point source pollutants. Non-point source pollution is spread out, not linked to one specific place, and includes sources such as residential and commercial areas, urban settings, farmlands, parking lots, roads, and from stream bank erosion. The lake is also a vital resource for the communities and economies of the Lake Champlain Basin providing ample sites for recreation on the water 
as well as a niche for the Vermont tourism industry. The basin is fortunate to have many public sites where individuals can access and enjoy the lake. From state parks and boat launches to local marinas and community sailing centers. Lake Champlain is a natural treasure. We all have a part to play in protecting it and the waters that drain to it, now and into the future. This video was produced by Lake Champlain Sea Grant, a partnership among the University of Vermont, SUNY Plattsburgh, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. To learn more about Lake Champlain Sea Grant and to see other videos in this series, please visit our website. That's one of 10 new educational videos from the UVM Sea Grant Institute with lots of great information about the lake. Gary Dezeal is the project leader. Um, and Gary, you want businesses involved in tourism to know about these videos and to share them with their customers and employees. So how do they and others access these great videos? Yes, um, while the videos were first conceived as an educational series for New York and Vermont State Park employees, they are appropriate for anyone working in the tourism industry sectors, specifically relying on the natural charms of Lake Champlain Basin. So they are available on the web, and uh, we've recently sent out a postcard to over 500 businesses with a QR code so that you just point your cell phone at it, and off you go to there. Awesome. Terrific. And here is the website for the new video series from the Lake Champlain Sea Grant Institute. It is go.uvm.edu slash lake videos. Gary Dezeal, thank you so much for making these videos and for joining us today. Thank you, Fran. And thank you for joining us across the fence. Stay well.